Good morning, this is John Merrill at the Bay Campus. I'd like to do a balloon sounding uh, at 9.30 a.m. Right, from, from, uh, from the Bay Campus south of the bridge. Thank you very much. Very good, bye-bye. The observations we're making of ozone here are a, a basic environmental observation. We need to know where the ozone in the atmosphere is. It moves around quite a bit. Knowing where it is, how much there is, those are uh, important basic observations. The same agency that sponsors the Weather Service supports observations like this at five places around the country. Uh, one of them is here at URI. That'll take a couple minutes to lift off the floor. That's good. There, it just picked up. So now we have the right amount of gas in the balloon. This today is going to be our 333rd sounding. So there's about 3,000 liters of helium in the balloon, and that's enough to lift uh, the balloon itself and the package and provide the excess buoyancy needed to, to lift the sound through the air. It flies for about two hours. Time to hit out. At which point the balloon will have reached about 30 or 32 kilometers above the surface, 160,000 feet. At that level, the pressure in the atmosphere is very low and the air temperature is, is low. The balloon will have expanded from its approximately five foot diameter here to over 29 feet in diameter. And when the balloon bursts, the instrument package tumbles usually. Uh, and so we don't use the data on the way down but we do continue to receive a radio signal as the sun descends through the atmosphere. And we attach a parachute as part of the balloon train so that when it gets close to the surface, it slows the package down. When it first begins descending, it falls pretty fast. When we're ready to fly, what you'll see is we'll, we'll attach the instrument to one end of the string, attach the balloon to the other end of the string, and then uh, let the balloon rise on the string, sort of like flying a kite, until we get to the point where the instrument is suspended from the spring, then we let it go. And that's when the flight begins. Wow, straight up. Okay, three, two, one, on its way. Now that was easy, wasn't it? So we are getting data. This is the radio receiver. You can hear the, the warbling is the data. Uh, and then it connects to a modem, and the signal goes to a computer. And the computer is receiving the data, and we see a, a very, very rapid increase in ozone above the surface. The amount of ozone in the air has increased by a factor of three. The balloon is now one and a half kilometers above the surface, just over a mile. The balloon is rising at about five meters per second, thousand feet a minute. So this is a successful release. The specifics of the state of the atmosphere vary from day to day. So today there's thunderstorms coming. We're in tropical air. So the air is warm at the surface and very moist. And that, that will be reflected in the ozone profile. Uh, my students and I and the scientists we work with get a great deal of scientific excitement about analyzing those variations and documenting and, and trying to understand what the distribution is. You, know, you might say, wait a minute, why is this going on at School of Oceanography? Schools of Oceanography always need at least one faculty member who knows which way the wind blows. And I'm not the only person on this campus who knows which way the wind blows, but that is part of my expertise. 